It's time for the Georgia State Sports Update. Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome into the Georgia State Sports Update. In studio, Dave Cohen, along with head men's basketball coach Ron Hunter. And, Coach, great to have you in studio again this week. Uh, back from Alabama, the Panthers were down in Mobile and in Troy. And uh, wouldn't you know it, uh, played pretty well, but unfortunately came back with two mm -hmm. one-point losses to South Alabama and Troy. Yeah, probably the first time that's ever happened to me, uh, losing the game and winning overtime and uh, and having a chance to win both of them at the free throw line inside of a minute. But uh, we're going through some learning experiences right now, and uh, it's a learning curve, and we've talked about this before. Yep. Uh, with, uh, you know, a few years ago when RJ and those guys were freshmen, we had that same experience, and those guys the following year went to the NIT and NCAA tournament. So kind of eerie feeling how this group's a lot like that. Our, our young people are playing very well right now. They can't finish games, and then our seniors are not quite playing like seniors at the end. But we are playing well we're playing hard we're just not finishing games uh, we're doing a little things whether it's a free throw here or a step out of bounds here we got to clean some of those things up again as we've talked about uh, coach Hunter and I on the various radio shows and even here on this TV show you know you see in top 25 college basketball a lot yeah. of the top ranked teams in the country they're they're ranked almost every year for a reason because they're getting what we'll call the cream of the crop yeah. Uh, when it comes to recruits we've had some great players in this program here the last two three four years when you lose an R.J. Hunter and a Ryan Harrow and even throw in, you know, Curtis and, and Ryan, Curtis Washington and Ryan Green for their supporting role for those two, yeah. it's hard for mid-major programs, not just Georgia State, but mid-major programs, and let's, I call it mid-major. Yeah to bounce back and stay at the level we've been at the last couple of years. Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, but again, I, you know, I, I never want to buy into that early. So you're really trying to say, hey, listen, we can continue to do this, and especially after the wonderful run we had really the last few years. But you know, it's funny, the other day I was sitting there telling someone, uh, I remember making comments about, I hope the people at Georgia State really realize when you have a Ryan Harrell and R.J. Hunter to enjoy it because they yeah. don't come around all the time. And I probably should have been saying that to myself <laughs> more than anything else because again, there are some things that they did that you don't have to coach. It's just talent took over but these young the young people we got in our, in our program right now they, they're, they're figuring it out it's a little hard you guys it's, a, it's almost baptism by fire yeah. you guys are learning RJ didn't walk into the program learning that I mean he had struggles in that way you know Marcus and TJ and those guys all have struggles to, uh, their freshman year with that and our young freshmen who are playing a lot right now Austin and 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 and, uh, and Malik and some of those guys and, and they're trying to figure it out but sometimes it's difficult and then uh, you know again that's what we you know you had these plays where we just don't finish games well they're also trying to figure it out on the run it's yeah. Not like those guys that you just mentioned were sitting out last year and got to watch yeah. and learn. I mean, they're getting significant minutes. Yeah. They're having to learn while they're playing yeah. as freshmen. And really, when you look at uh, when you look at a guy like Jeremy Hollowell, he's actually he's almost a freshman because he didn't play a lot, so he's trying to figure it out. Isaiah Williams is playing a position really he shouldn't be playing right now, right. and he's trying to figure it out. So again, uh, we, you know, we don't make excuses. Again, we, we won some of these games early that we're losing now, uh, and I do think that before it's all said and done with this group, we'll figure it out what. You know, especially at the end of games, how to close these games out. All right, real quick, uh, as we recap the two previous games on the road in Alabama, uh, last Thursday in Mobile against uh, the Jaguars of South Alabama, which I told you reminded me a lot. It was like deja vu all over again for the game on the road at Arkansas State a few yeah. weeks ago. Comes down to a couple of late free throws. Kevin yeah. Ware hits one of them. The game ends up going to overtime. If he hits two, it may never go to overtime. We lose a one-point game uh, at South Alabama, 79-78. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's like every game on the road has been that way for yeah. us. It's been a struggle this year on the road, uh, which generally happens to teams that are inexperienced in that regard, closing it out and, and not having the fans behind you to kind of give you that extra boost in that regard. And, and again, you know, but a, a couple free throws here or there or, or a rebound here or there, uh, then, you you know, you're able to win a game. We just, I think what happens is we get get up to that last three minutes and all of a sudden we just start to think about it and that's when the pressure kind of gets to us and you know we will we'll play well up until the probably that 37 minute mark and then all of a sudden we try to find ways not to lose instead of going to win the game well we had talked about Jeremy Hollowell he had been struggling uh, but yeah. boy he really came out of it uh, out of the struggles this weekend he had 22 points at both South Alabama 22 again 
uh, at Troy, but uh, down in South Alabama had a double-double with 11 rebounds to go along with his 22 points. Yeah, he's really come out of it. We've done some things to kind of free him up a little bit, but now our guard play has kind of really struggled. Kevin Ware has not been scoring the ball, and Isaiah Williams hasn't been scoring the ball. So, you know, all we did is flip-flopped it. So not a lot of change offensively for us outside of him getting better uh, opportunities to score. Now our guards are really struggling. So it's kind of been that, that imbalance all year. We haven't been able to put it all together at the same time all year. And so that's what, you know, again, at some point you, you think that's going to happen. So we're still hopeful that happens uh, during the season where Jeremy's playing well and then Isaiah's playing well and Kevin's playing well on the offensive end of the floor especially. And you got Austin Donaldson some minutes yeah. on this trip. He's the freshman from Jonesboro High School down in Jonesboro, Georgia. Uh, played 10 minutes uh, at South Alabama, came back and played 20 at Troy on Saturday. I think he had 1.3 rebounds, but more importantly, I think what you like the best, he's diving all over the floor for loose balls. He had five steals. Yeah, you know, again, uh, one of the highlights probably for the weekend is how he played. Uh, it was hard on him really because he got hurt, and we had thought about redshirting him because he was hurt uh, early in the season, and he, get, he really lost a lot of ground, especially learning the plays and learning the system. And so we just kind of kept him along and just in case. And, and so even now, there's only certain things that we can run when he's in the game because he hadn't had a lot of time. But he's going to be a good player. He plays hard. He plays the right way. Uh, again, Again, not the most talented offensive player, but man, he, he, his energy and his enthusiasm for the game is, is contagious, and uh, we think he's going to be an outstanding player here at Georgia State. All right, well, a lot of Panther pride on campus, and we've got a piece coming up that I uh, wanted to kind of flow into asking you, uh, you know, a lot of Panther pride. Yeah. What's one of the things that uh, you like and look forward to the most about game day at Georgia State in the sports arena? Well, outside of the final score, when the game's <laughs> over, we win. <laughs> uh, actually, I love uh, the, the crowd. I love the student section because the student section faces us, and, and when we're making a run and to see the students all in sync and standing up and cheering and airing their, their blue and really cheering for Georgia State, that's special to me because I remember when I first got to Georgia State, that wasn't the case. And so our student participation for me is the best part of game day. Student participation has been great the last couple of years. They've had a lot to cheer from. And our Cali man caught up with a number of students at the sports arena to ask them about Panther Pride and what they like best about the game day uh, experience at the sports arena. What is your favorite part about basketball? Man, just just sitting up here close where you can actually see the players and hear them talk. It's exciting, I mean, especially since I graduated from here. I love coming to Georgia State basketball games because first, we almost always win them um, and such a great arena and great environment. It's so fun to cheer on the team and watch them kick other teams' butts. What is your favorite part about Georgia State basketball? Well, the intensity, like the final countdown, everybody's up in their chairs and shouting and screaming. It's so much fun. I like when guys, when they dunk the ball, that is very exciting. My favorite part would have to be the fans, when everyone gets together and we're all cheering on our Panthers and we're just in a great environment and we want our team to win. That's the best part is the fans. I think this, the student section and the whole spirit squad is really important to the atmosphere of the games because without us and without the rest of the spirit squad, it's not, it's not, it's not as enthusiastic for the for the for the team itself. Like um, the team, they look to us and the rest of the spirit squad to just basically make sure that we distract the other team as much as we can, and it helps them out as well. They like the noise, they love the energy, they, it just pumps them up. It's the momentum that they, they um, it gives them the momentum they need to win the game. My favorite part about basketball season is probably just how we can draw a nice crowd. We have the band going behind us, you know, the new DJs. You can feel the energy when we're about to score, you know, the intensity against the two teams. I just think it's an awesome atmosphere. Also, I really like that we can have potential to better the school, you know, once like we make it to the NCAA tournament, we can possibly go very far with that. So it's just kind of like we're on the edge of opportunity and I love it. And I think if we can all just get together and have a great time out here, we can really accomplish something. Um, my favorite part of basketball is really just about like like how deep how much defense they play. Um, we have a really good energetic team. You can tell they never get tired. I can tell Ron Hunter's doing a really good job with the team. I like the vibe. This is like the only time that me, like I feel like I'm a real part of a Panther family. We all get together. We all cheer for the team, and it's just a great experience. 
my favorite part has to be going crazy, cheering with the crowd, losing my voice, almost like tearing something, just going wild and talking smack to the other team. Talking smack to the other team. <laughs> my favorite part of a basketball game would have to be the energy in the auditorium, in the, in the arena. The energy is amazing. You feel it from the fans, the crowd, the coaches, the players. It's contagious. So anytime you're in the arena, you're going to have a great time for a game. I think my favorite part would just be how hyped the students get about the games. Like ever since they brought the, uh, the DJ and having the DJ at the games, it's been really hyped. So I like that. What's your favorite part about Georgia State basketball? I, I gotta say, I just love when we win. The school spirit, especially when we play Southern, it was just crazy. I like to come to the basketball games because, well, there are several reasons why. First, we're really good, and we've been winning most of our games in the time I've been here. And I've also met a lot of people, and I've made a lot of new friends. And it's a really exciting atmosphere to be here at the game. Georgia State basketball is great. It's definitely bringing a lot of energy to GSU. I feel like everyone's excited, and we're getting a lot of wins. So I'm really excited for Georgia State basketball this time. My favorite part of a basketball game is hitting a three. I like shooting threes. I'm a shooter myself. So I, I, guess I have to say that and be biased. You know, Dave, we talked with the fans about their favorite parts of the game. My favorite part will always be the intensity of the last two minutes. Back to you. And we're back in studio with head coach Ron Hunter. we got about six games left in the regular season, coach, and might even be a few less than that uh, as we kind of work towards the Sunbelt Conference Tournament coming up in New Orleans. And we got Arkansas State coming in the sports arena. That's one of those games that a free throw here, a free throw there, that game doesn't go to overtime, and we probably leave Jonesboro, Arkansas with a win. Yeah, we really do. I thought we played, you know, again, we, we, we played well in that game. I thought we were, uh, we did a lot of great things defensively. We really confused them and had them, had them down. Um, and then we got to that last three minutes and we didn't close the game out. Uh, missed some key free throws in that game and missed the block out and, and allowed them to get that long three uh, toward the end. And uh, I think that's when it's, all this really started for us, is really the Arkansas trip where we just, uh, things just kept getting bad to worse for us and we couldn't get ourselves out of it. And so, uh, so we need to come back and, and, and get that win and get that split from the two teams that we had there and then move on to the next one. See, when you say, I say deja vu all over again, what you just said, some missed free throws late and then allowing that three, it's exactly what happened yeah. at South Alabama. Yeah. Missed a free throw and then Stover in overtime hits that uh, three-point field goal. Yeah. I mean, uh, the games were almost identical. Yeah. And it's funny because both threes were not great shots by the other team. Uh, they're off balance threes. They just go in and hit nothing but the bottom of the net. You know, it just, uh, you know, we just, you know, we, we haven't been able to have that uh, luck in our favor right. in, in, in the last few weeks. So Arkansas State will be here uh, on the back end of the two Arkansas teams coming into Atlanta. And then we get the annual trip down to Statesboro. The Hanner Fieldhouse going to take on the Georgia Southern Eagles. Mm -hmm. A team that uh, we beat here by three in the yeah. sports arena. Well, again, you can throw the records out when the two teams play. It'll, it'll be a battle. They'll have a great crowd going in there. And uh, Georgia State's had a lot of success against Georgia Southern the last few years. And so uh, it's, it's important that, uh, that, that our guys come ready because we know that they'll, they'll, be, uh, they'll be ready. They're playing a lot better right now. They, they've got kind of the same issues that we've got. Yep. A lot of young people that are playing in their rotation. Uh, but again, they're, they, they're kind of grown up a little bit. They're not freshmen anymore. They're making big shots. And so uh, we know that that's going to be a, uh, that, that'll be a rocking crowd next Tuesday. You know, I think uh, some of the guys that recently vacated the program knew this, especially having beaten Georgia Southern, mm -hmm. Uh, well, last year in the final regular season home game to win the Sun Belt regular season title, mm -hmm. and then a week later beating them in that low scoring, yeah. ugly game at the tournament, 38 36. Mm -hmm. Uh, this current crop of Panthers, the younger ones, they have they bought into the whole Georgia State, Georgia Southern rivalry thing yet, or they've got to experience it maybe a little bit more? Well, they probably had to experience a little bit more. They saw the they saw our crowd, they saw our version of it, which was terrific that night. Uh, right. Probably the best crowd that, that I've seen at Georgia State since I've been at Georgia State uh, was this past when we played Georgia Southern, and, and the way that the, the students were, the students were terrific in that game. Uh, but a lot of these guys hadn't been down in Statesboro <laughs> and, had, and hadn't had... <laughs> they and hadn't they, been they, to Lafayette. You know, they hadn't been to Lafayette, where their names seem to change at those two cities. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> their fans don't call us by our regular names there, so so it'll be fun. I I, I actually enjoy going down to those, both of those places, especially uh, Georgia Southern, because the rivalry is so intense and 
And uh, again, it's, uh, it's, it, it, they've always been great games. You know, the last couple of years, there's no question that uh, your son, R.J. Hunter and uh, Ryan Harrow, and really just about everybody else, uh, T.J. Shipes and Marcus Kreider could speak to this if they were here, thrived off going yeah. into that kind of an environment, yeah. whether it was Statesboro or whether it was the Cajun Dome in Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah, you know, when, you, when you're a good player, you like that. I mean, yeah. you want to go on the road and you want to, you know, you want to hit those big shots, you want to win, and, and, and do it, especially in rivalry games. And so, no, those guys really enjoyed that and, and whether it was there or was it, it was a uh, or neutral site whenever the two teams meet you want to have your a game you want to make sure you are uh, you're, you're ready to play because you know there's bragging rights there are a lot of different things that go into that but uh, again from a coaching standpoint it's a fun game but but they are playing they're playing much better basketball well and some teams can be rattled by that if you haven't played mm -hmm. that before and I mean even the younger guys have uh, been in you know, I'm sure some big big high school yeah. games Malik mm -hmm. was on a state mm -hmm. championship team in Savannah and down in Jonesboro Austin was on a state championship team at Jonesboro but you know at the collegiate level the arenas are usually a little bit bigger uh, you know I mean that takes a little getting used to if you haven't been through that yeah you know our, our inexperienced guys what you look this year we've struggled a little bit on the road this year that's been kind of a tough thing for us this year is playing on the road but but you get to the end of the year now you only got a couple of road games left and you kind of got to throw that out you got to say listen I know this is going to happen I might have to mentally do something different than I've done in, in the previous uh, you know seven eight nine ten games that we had on the road so uh, but again I, I, I think our guys understand that they, we've been through a lot this year we, yeah. we, we're not gonna see anything we haven't seen before you know this won't be like a culture shock when we walk in uh, to a place like Georgia Southern because we've, we've been in some hostile environment so we just got to have ourselves ready to play well finally on the upside with this team and you hear this in football a lot defense wins games. Mm -hmm. I mean, Georgia State basketball has been playing some outstanding defense. Yeah. Defense has been giving the offense a chance yeah. to win basketball games. Yeah, I tell you what, you know, our, the, the last few weeks defensively, we it, our defense has been off the charts. We've been playing well. Offensively, we, we, you know, we don't get our fast break points. We don't, we're missing key free throws and, and, and we're missing some great, we get great looks and we're just missing some of those shots. And at some point, those shots are going to fall in. And then when those shots fall in and our defense maintains what it does, then, then again, we'll have, we'll have an opportunity to do something special. All right, again, coming up, a home game with Arkansas State, then on the road to Statesboro to take on the Georgia Southern Eagles. Ready for some questions from the fans? Sure, let's give it a try. All right, again, as they do each and every week, the cameras of the Georgia State Sports Update have crisscrossed the campus of Georgia State now, and they have brought back these questions for head basketball coach Ron Hunter. Hi, my name is Kyle Smith, and I'm a journalism student here at Georgia State. Coach, we know that family is really important to you. How do you balance coaching life with family? Balancing family life and coaching is one of the most difficult things I've had to do in my professional life because basketball, I've sp I spent so much time on the road. Uh, most of my uh, kids' childhood, I spent traveling, whether it was recruiting or at games. And so one of the things I try to do is I try to involve my family with the team, uh, traveling with me, uh, doing things, you know, whether it's in the airport when we're on a road trip, uh, maybe going to dinner together or going to a movie together uh, because it's very difficult being a head coach because it's taking you away so long. Uh, but I looked at my family and one of the things that we talk about is quality versus quantity. As long as that when I'm there that I am being dad or a husband, I think that's what's most important. I'm Emmett Meinhold. I go to Georgia State University. My major is journalism uh, with a concentration in multimedia reporting. Um, who do you look up to in the coaching profession? Who do I look up to in a coaching profession? Uh, there aren't many coaches that I look up to. In a guy. I think a lot of coaches do a tremendous job. But if I was honest about the question, uh, the, the two people that, that have meant more to me about how I coach uh, is Dr. Martin Luther King and my mom. Two people that I have great respect for. My mom, for the most part, raised me as uh, she was a single mom during that time and kind of gave me the discipline I needed. And then Dr. Martin Luther King, because of the best servant that you can have in any man that walked this earth. So uh, those are the two people that I've kind of balanced my coaching aspect or my philosophy on those two people and not so much a coach. Hey, coach, this is Grace Chung at GSU. I'm currently a film major and I have a question for you. Who's your favorite pro player and why? Who's my favorite pro, pro player and why? This is probably the easiest question I've ever had since I've been at Georgia State. Uh, there's a kid that plays for the Boston Celtics, wears number 28, uh, again, has had some great games, has some games he hadn't played. His name is R.J. Hunter, is by far my best player. He's the only guy in the NBA to watch. Uh, again, for, for you that don't know, he is my son, and I love him very much and extremely proud of him. Good questions this week. I think even I knew the answer to that third question. <laughs> and RJ doing pretty well up there. Yeah, he really is. Really proud of him. And uh, uh, I wish I could see him play more. You know, my, my day job keeps me from going to Boston and watching a lot of games. 
All right, Coach, let's go get a couple of wins this week. We'll see you here next week. All right, let's do that, Dave. All right, I want to thank Head Coach Ron Hunter joining us here on the Georgia State Sports Update. Busy time at Georgia State with softball underway, baseball getting underway, and, of course, tennis, and then we've got basketball, so, so a lot going on. And right now we've got our uh, on the schedule to tell you what's coming up this week at Georgia State Athletics. It's a busy Saturday at Georgia State. You've got all day action out at the Bob Heck Softball Complex as the Georgia State softball team hosts the Panther Invitational. That's on February the 20th. Coming up at noon on Saturday the 20th, women's basketball hosting Arkansas State at the Georgia State Sports Arena. College baseball is underway. Head coach Greg Frady and the baseball team hosting Virginia Commonwealth out at the GSU Baseball Complex at Panthersville. And then coming up on Saturday night, the 20th, or Saturday afternoon, men's basketball hosting Arkansas State. Busy Sunday as well, February the 21st. The Softball Panther Invitational continues all day out at the Heck Softball Complex at Panthersville. At noon, women's tennis in action. They'll take on George Washington here in town. And baseball going to take on the Boilermakers of Purdue at 1 o'clock on Sunday out at the Baseball Complex at Panthersville. On Wednesday, February 24th, 3 p.m. softball, Georgia State hosting St. John's, again at the Heck Softball Complex at Panthersville. And on Friday, February 26th at 4 p.m., men's tennis against East Tennessee State University here in Atlanta. And that is what's going on in Georgia State Athletics this week. And again, a busy time here at Georgia State, not only with men's and women's basketball, but of course now the spring sports, college baseball, college softball are getting underway and we're out here at the Bob Heck softball complex joined right now by current head softball coach Roger Kincaid and Roger thanks for joining us your season's already underway and well you guys went out to Tempe Arizona and no holding back how about that schedule in your first five games of this tournament out in Tempe you guys play three uh, top 25 teams uh, in your first five that's incredible yeah I'd like to get, get a hold of the guy that scheduled that <laughs> unfortunately that was me Dave so uh, I, I need to get on to myself, but uh, it was an ambitious schedule. Um, you know, we try to play the best competition we can, see where we're at, and give us a little benchmark about what we need to work on. And, and I think we got plenty of stuff that, that we can improve on and, and a lot of situations that we can just get better. Of course, you spend a lot of time out here at, the, uh, at your field here, at uh, Bob Heck Field. Practicing was good to kind of get the team, get on the airplane, get out to Arizona. Of course, it was, I'm sure, a lot warmer there than it's been here and in the Atlanta area. And, and really hit the ground running with that, uh, with the group that you played. Because, and I'll run, run down, you played Oregon, sixth ranked at the time in uh, softball, Cal Poly, Indiana, Utah, and Notre Dame. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a great schedule. Good competition for the kids. Uh, it's always exciting to play those big name schools that our kids have heard of and, and everybody has heard of. Uh, what you want to do is play a little better and defeat some of them, and, and we'll get there. We're working hard on it, and the, the schedule was ambitious, but the, the time difference, and we, we actually didn't get back to the hotel on Friday night until almost 4 o'clock in the morning, so it, it was kind of a crazy deal, but that's tournament ball. All right, so as you go into this season, again, you're already five games in. You've got a big invitational that uh, is scheduled out here uh, at, uh, at the complex. You know, what are your thoughts on this team uh, coming out of uh, a year ago as, as, you get, as you get further and further into this season? Well, we, we lost three very important senior starters for us. Uh, they played first and third in center field, which is three pretty good positions, some good power numbers, good leadership, so we had to fill that void. And uh, as we're sitting there playing this weekend, I realize our infield, we have one person playing the same position they played last year. And uh, it kind of showed a little bit. So we've got to get them back in sync. We've got to get them back in the mind frame of, of fundamentally doing what we're supposed to do. And also communicating. I think that was a big piece of the puzzle for us over the weekend. We're, they're not used to playing beside each other. And I think we might have uh, overestimated that importance. And so we're going to stress that this week. We're going to stress getting back to fundamentals and making sure we're talking and, and picking each other up and, and being in the spots we're supposed to be. Let's talk a little bit about the Sunbelt Conference now. Uh, Panthers have been in the league now for a few years, so everybody's got their feet wet with regards to making the road trips, seeing all the opposing team stadiums. As you and I were talking, it's still uh, Louisiana, Lafayette, and Sunbelt. It's kind of funny that softball and baseball in the Sunbelt, you look at the top of the league and you tend to see a few of the same schools' names. Yeah, they're really good. They're, they, they've been historically good for a long time. Um, they, they recruit good players right there in Louisiana and out of Texas. 
and uh, they got a unique system that they coach and, and he teaches it and, and they do a good job of executing it but I, they got a really good senior class I'll be glad when they're gone um, <laughs> to be quite honest with you but no they're they're a great program uh, it's a lot of fun to play them because they, they have a great fan base uh, and they play the game the way that you know you're supposed to play it so so we love playing them uh, we we, we want to be more successful against them that's our goal and I think we'll, we'll begin that process this year all right, well, lastly, we got some questions from some of the softball fans for you, but lastly, I want to let you brag on the uh, softball complex out here. you got a brand new scoreboard. Turf looks great. Field looks great. I mean, this is a great facility out here that you have to play in. Th this is a fabulous facility. We're proud to have it. Um, you didn't mention our indoor facility. We have a nice indoor facility, too. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the finest complexes that we see when we travel, and we're, we're really pr proud to have it. Uh, Look forward to seeing the new school board in action. Hadn't had, had a game yet, so that's going to be great. Appreciate all the administration and 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 Bob Heck for for helping us buy that. That was that was a great thing that he did for our program, and uh, we greatly appreciate it. But this is a great facility, and we're proud to call it home. All right, right now let's take some questions from the Georgia State softball fans for softball coach Roger Kincaid. I'm Weston Manders, a video production MA student at Georgia State. And coach, I know you were a part of the 1980 Georgia Football National Championship team. How does a former Georgia football player get involved in coaching softball? It's a great question. The, the short answer is I had three daughters uh, that played softball. My, my, my middle daughter was playing. She was five years old. I was sitting in the stands watching her play. And the Yahoos that were coaching the team had no idea what they were doing. And I said, I can do that. So that's how I ended up coaching softball. And uh, believe it or not, I, I just moved up through the ladder, coached travel ball, coached high school ball, and ended up fortunately living here in Atlanta and being in the right place at the right time and, and was given the opportunity to come, come coach at Georgia State. So that's, that's, that's how I got there. Hi, Coach. I'm Chris Osborne, a professor here at Georgia State University. And my youngest daughter just started playing fast pitch softball. And my question is, what is the number one skill a young softball player needs to develop to become a good hitter? Well, hitting uh, is to each his own. Hitting is a science in its own. There's a million and one ways to teach hitting, but if I had to break it down into one skill, I would say bat speed. If you can generate bat speed, you'll be able to hit the ball. And if, if I can get a kid in here that knows how to generate bat speed, we can work on them fundamentally and make them a strong hitter. Hi, my name is Maya Howell, and I'm a journalism student here at Georgia State University. Coach Kincaid, what is the best pitch in softball, and how do you throw it? The best pitch in softball to me is a drop ball. Um, the drop ball serves a lot of purposes. You can, you can throw the drop ball, and if they hit it, it's a ground ball. You have more chances to get a ground ball out than you do a ball in the air. And it also keeps the ball in the park. It's really hard to hit a drop ball out as long as you hit your spot. And as far as throwing it, I'm not a pitching coach. I don't pretend to be one, but you got to get on top of that drop and you got to spin it and make that ball dive into the dirt. But that, that is the greatest pitch in softball to me uh, because it's the hardest one to hit for a base hit and it's also the hardest one to hit out of the park. All right, coach, good questions, good answers. Great having you on, a, on the show this week. It's great to have, the, to have us out here and, uh, and see what's going on with Georgia State softball. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Tell everybody to come out this weekend and watch us play. Go Panthers. All right. I want to thank uh, head softball coach Roger Kincaid. I'm Dave Cohen for the entire crew. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week right here on the Georgia State Sports Update.